Welcome to Capital Preview, a show where we discuss important issue with our state representatives. Capital Preview is brought to you by MC22. I'm Bill Peard with the Iowa Cable and Telecommunications Association, and I'll be your host this morning. Our guest today is Chris Hall, Democrat from Sioux City, and I appreciate you, Representative Hall, joining us this morning to talk to us a little bit about what's going on at our Capitol. So I'm going to, we're just going to start off just kind of, if you can give me a thumbnail sketch of how you think the session's going, what sure. you see in the next three weeks. I know that you guys uh, adjourn on April the 19th. In well, theory. In theory, yeah. right, yes. right. Yeah. It's the 108th session, but we'll see how things go. And maybe you can give us a little bit of roadmap as to whether you think you're going to get there or beyond there. So You bet. Uh, so far, the legislative session is moving along just fine. Uh, we haven't seen too many contentious issues. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the sixth year in a row where we've seen a Democratic Senate and a Republican House. So with a split legislature, uh, each of the last few years we've also run past our adjournment date. I think there's a good chance that's going to happen again this year. Do you? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think uh, we've, we've tackled most of the policy so far, which is often how we spend the first half of, of right. the session. Yep. And right now we're starting to get into more of the budgetary discussions. Um, we do have a new Speaker of the House and a new Majority Leader this year, mm -hmm. which, which affects the way that negotiation occurs, and they have to, I think, step into those new roles and also uh, learn how those things process out. So, so you're going to learn from them, too, because you don't know how they're going to. I, we'll we'll have to Do see. This year, yeah. yeah, we'll have to see what the big issues uh, that remain, uh, how they get kind of factored and, and figured out between those uh, kind of party leaders. So, right. Yeah. Um, Chris, you know the and you kind of touched on that a little bit. The second half of the session is awful is often focused on the budget. Can you give me an overview of what you think the budget landscape is right now? I mean, that could change, I guess, in a week or a couple of days, but. Right now, uh, we at least have the foundational pieces, the framework for the budget negotiations to start. Uh, the state's revenue estimating conference met last week. It's a nonpartisan panel, uh, including, uh, you know, uh, legislative research staff and appointee of the governor, economists, and, and they look at different factors in the economic landscape. Mm -hmm. Overall, they said the uh, economy in Iowa is faring well. Uh, there are some headwinds as far as the agricultural and manufacturing sectors. Mm -hmm. Commodities are down from their peak in 2012, and, and of course we also have a strong dollar, so manufacturers aren't seeing as many exports. Uh, but altogether, Iowa's economy is doing very well. Uh, the way that things are probably going to move forward, uh, we've resolved tax coupling and coupled with the federal government for one year. Uh, we also know that education funding is probably the next big stumbling block and something that we, we hope to see come through some eventual agreement that people can say uh, to their school boards back home, here's your funding for the coming year, mm -hmm. um, and, and that moves us along fast. Yeah. Um, Chris, you are a young legislator. Um, what do you see as the generational differences and how issues are perceived at the Capitol, um, specifically on the medical cannabis uh, Bill? Uh, I actually, so I, I was asked at home this weekend at a forum uh, whether that is a Republican or Democratic issue and how it kind of splits based on party lines. And it's a great question because I tend to see it much more in generational differences. Mm -hmm. I think that you see legislators from, from my generation uh, perceive it much more as an issue of compassion. Uh, if you have people who are dealing with chronic disease or end of life care, uh, whether it's medical cannabis or other forms of, of medicine that have really developed quite a bit over the past few years, uh, most people of my generation see that as an issue of compassion. I think uh, every once in a while you might find legislators from an older generation who still have some stigma attached to mm -hmm. cannabis, whether it's uh, in a medical form or otherwise. And, and so I, th I don't see it very much as partisan, but I, I do uh, have hope that as the legislature looks at the issue, uh, they become more educated that it's something that we can move forward with. Yeah, I think that's a great um, summary of that because I'm probably right in the middle of that. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I, there's still some stigma attached, but yet I think um, I kind of am open to the thought of if it's a if it's a 
uh, medical solution to some of those horrible um, problems that those people deal with. And I've, and I've seen uh, some colleagues of mine who are uh, of an older generation uh, who have really actually changed on the issue. Yeah, they've, just, they've seen parents come in and testify to uh, a child with epilepsy or, or somebody that in their family has been affected by cancer. Uh -huh. And when you hear those stories, I think that it helps uh, change your mind and see where they're coming from and, and understand it on a more human level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very good. Um, so this is an election year. We all know that. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you expect uh, the House Democrats will do this year? And I know because the the, the House is uh, Republican now, majority Republican, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah uh, the House Republicans currently have 57 seats. Democrats have 43. Uh, I do think that House Democrats are going to do well. We're going to make some gains this year. Uh, part of that is a strong recruitment class. We just had our uh, close to candidate filings this last week. Mm -hmm. We have phenomenal uh, candidates in many of their communities. Uh, we have uh, retired educators. We have uh, firefighters and, I mean, just good people uh, running on the ballot for House Democrats this year. Mm -hmm. um, put that together with, I think, uh, some, some perception that there's a lot of uh, a frustration in the House Republican caucus uh, over education funding uh, primarily, but also other issues that um, really have, have made for difficult years of late. And I think that uh, Iowans might be ready for a change. Chris, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tempt fate a little bit and have you <laughs> expand a little bit on the national level. So sure. give us your uh, little, little uh, evaluation on how you think both, and on both sides of the issue, on both the Republican and the Democratic side. I'd just kind of like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, it, uh, it's evolved quite a bit even from when the candidates were here in Iowa uh, not too long ago. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's really going to be an interesting landscape. Uh, if the top of the ticket on the Republican side is Donald Trump, uh, you will certainly see some people who are, are new to the experience coming out to vote. Uh, but I also think you'll see some, some interesting areas uh, go blue. I mean, they're already talking about it in terms of the Goldwater election where you had Democrats who were elected but didn't even know it because they never thought they had a chance. And blue being the Democrats. Blue right. being the Democrats. Right. Um, you know, I think uh, Donald Trump is, is not at the top of the ticket going to have uh, a down ballot effect that uh, goes well in suburban areas and in inner cities, I know for sure. But I think even communities like Sioux City where I represent uh, that are blue collar working uh, class, you know, voters, uh, you'll see some folks turn out for him, but I think you'll see a lot of people uh, turned off by what they've seen in, in rhetoric of, of violence and, uh, yeah. and just, I mean, kind of stoking the fire. I, right. I don't think it's what people really want to see in their, in their president. No, no. So let's, so give us a little bit on the Democratic side, what, uh, you know, um, and briefly, sure. um, Bernie versus Hillary, I mean, um, that it's funny that we have a presidential uh, slate where they're both known by their first names. But so what's yeah. so what's Bernie is uh, Bernie Sanders uh, kind of amazes me that he is 74 years old, but yet he is he's fiery. He is. Yeah, and and I think uh, I mean compliments to them both. Uh, I think uh, Bernie has really contributed to the national conversation on some very important issues. Yeah. When you talk about income inequality, when you talk about uh, working families who are still uh, trying to get their way out of poverty, and you see uh, a lot of the top 1% of income earners uh, faring well out of the economic recession while others are having a hard time recovering. Um, those are things the American public needs to discuss, and I really uh, lend credit to Bernie for, for pushing that along. Absolutely. Uh, as far as Hillary Clinton goes, uh, I did endorse her during the uh, primaries and caucuses. Uh, I think she is unrivaled in her qualifications to hold office. Uh, the presidency is something that is a stressful experience. It's something that uh, you're, of course, uh, really trying to find balance between a lot of competing interests. And you need to be a leader. And uh, it's something that I think she is uniquely qualified for and would do a tremendous job at. Very good. Very good summation on both parts. Um, so educational funding has been a hot topic. Um, over the past few years, how, what are you hearing from school boards and superintendents um, on this issue? I think most people, when they, they think of a legislator, uh, they expect us to be down in Des Moines full time during session. But the truth is we're at home on the weekend. Most often we have forums when we're home. And, and I actually met with my school board just on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, they 
I think are very frustrated by the legislature's approach to education funding. It's true of this year, it's true of the past few years. Uh, they're getting their funding uh, numbers very late in the process. Uh, the Iowa House has, of course, broken the law several times in, in not setting that education funding within 30 days of the convening of the le legislature. Um, so they're frustrated, first of all, by the timing, but also by the inadequacy of funds. Um, the, the truth of the story is we're going to see uh, school boards probably get between two and two and a half percent more than they did last year. And that funding is inadequate. It doesn't keep up with the costs of inflation or uh, other costs of doing business as an education uh, industry. And um, I think that they're frustrated. My school board in Sioux City said that if, if we fund them at 2%, they'll have to lay off uh, 23 positions. And that's for a school district that's actually growing in headcount. Hmm. Uh, those aren't really support staff, they're actual teachers in the classroom that are going to be looked at as, as position eliminations. That's tough, you know. It's, I mean, you think 2% is going to handle the gap or it's going to fill the gap and it's not keeping up, is it? Well, I mean, the real, the real uh, you know, key to the puzzle here is the fact that every dollar that's been given away in corporate welfare and tax cuts the last several years is a dollar that's not there for education. Uh, the House has passed over $700 million of tax cuts in the last few years. Um, I don't think most of the citizens in my district are the ones who are seeing those benefits. Uh, and it leaves us with a few dollars uh, that remain to fund education, which most Iowans also identify as a priority. Very good. Um, so I know, Chris, before you were, uh, worked in the legislature, you worked pr um, professionally on prairie restoration and natural resource issues. Um, what are environmental and natural resource issues are being considered right now? The, the top two this year that you're hearing a lot of discussion around would be water quality and also the Natural Resources and Outdoor Recreation Trust Fund. Uh, water quality, of course, is something that uh, has, has bumped up on people's radars. Uh, they see lakes and, and ponds around them uh, being closed during the summer because wa water quality isn't such that uh, the DNR wants people to go swimming there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's creating issues for drinking water in, in large communities like Des Moines, and you've seen a lawsuit uh, arrive because of that. Yeah, absolutely. It takes a lot of funds to address water quality, uh, and I think that the legislature is grappling with that. Uh, where do we find the funds? How do we structure them in such a way that they're made available to really get at the, the heart of, of what needs to happen? Uh, I think the other piece of it with the uh, Natural Resources Outdoor Recreation Trust Fund, that's uh, going back to 2010 when voters passed a constitutional amendment. Uh, it would provide lots of resources to parks and trails and outdoor recreation causes. Uh, it's something that's very popular with young voters and people of my generation. And, and I, I'd love to see the fund uh, receive funding, and, and I think it would move Iowa in a great direction. So anything else? We get, you know, our time is, is just about up, Chris. It's been a great conversation. Do you have anything else that you want to add to the... Uh, yeah. I think that we're going to have an interesting uh, political year ahead. Uh, of course, the presidential races will be interesting, but we have important races here in, in Iowa. Yep. Uh, Senator Grassley up for re-election, a lot of pressure with him, uh, of course, on the judicial hearings. Um, I'm running for re-election and, and just uh, proud to represent my community and, and look forward to continuing to do so. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Excellent job. Um, thank you for joining us on Capitol Preview, our guest today has been Chris Hall, Democrat from Sioux City. I appreciate your time and stay tuned for another edition of Capital Preview.